When Shen Qingqiu stirred, he felt a coolness trickling from the wounds on his body. The burning hellish pain had been alleviated by quite a bit. He struggled to open his eyes. On one knee beside him was a figure, currently looking down as he examined Shen Qingqiu's condition. Upon the white stone platform, a black hem was evenly laid, a plain and rustic longsword held firmly beneath it. Several empty, upended medicine bottles lay scattered about. The sword was Xuan Su's sword. The person was, as one would expect, Yue Qingyuan. It was the same gentle and handsome face, just a good deal paler than usual, the exhaustion evident. At this sort of time, only Yue Qingyuan would still come to see him. How did you get in? Shen Jingjiu asked his voice hoarse. Luo Binghe was determined to make him suffer. There was no way he'd been willing to let Yue Qingyuan enter the water prison to help him keep holding on by thread. Seeing that Chen Qingqiu could speak, Yue Qingyuan sighed in relief. He held his hand while whispering, Stop talking. Focus. He wanted to pass Chen Qingqiu's spiritual energy and help those wounds heal faster. This time, at last, Shen Qingqiu didn't brush him aside, because right now he was thinking, That's right, no matter what, he's still a sex leader. As harsh as Luo Binghe and that old geezer from Huanghua Palace wanted to be, they had to at least show some superficial courtesy. But it must have taken a lot of trouble for Yue Qingyuan to gain entrance. Spiritual energy coursed through Shen Qingqiu's wounds, and the pain in his twisting flesh felt like dense clusters of iron needles stabbing into him. Shen Qingqiu clenched his teeth, his hatred surging to the point that he laughed instead. <laughs> that little bastard Luo Binghe sure has plenty of tricks up his sleeves. At the sound of the bone-deep venom within his tone, Yue Qingyuan sighed again. In truth, Yue Qingyuan wasn't the type to sigh much, but Shen Qingqiu was inevitably capable of wearing him to the bone. Marshal brother, he said exhausted, we've already come this far, so why do you still refuse to consider your wrongdoings? Even if someone had knocked out his teeth, even if he was left swallowing his own blood, Shen Qingqiu had always stubbornly refused to admit his transgressions, especially in front of Yue Qingyuan, in front of whom you could absolutely forget about any confessions. What wrongdoings? Shen Qingqiu asked bitterly. Sect leader, please tell me, what is Luo Binghe if not a bastard? You just wait. He won't be satisfied only taking it out on me. If in the future some tumultuous storm upsets the cultivation world, then the only thing I will have done wrong was fail to cut him down at the start. Yue Qingyuan shook his head. It seemed like he'd anticipated this answer and that he had no desire to advise or admonish him. The situation had already gone past the point of no return. Any further admonishment was pointless. Suddenly, he asked, Did you really kill Liu Marshal brother? Shen Qingqiu didn't want to look at his face at all while he answered, but he couldn't help but lift his eyes, giving Yue Qingyuan's expression a quick glance. He froze for a moment, then abruptly yanked his hand out of Yue Qingyuan's grip and sat up. You repeatedly said that you'd kill him one day said Yue Qingyuan, but I never thought that you'd actually do it. <laughs> Aren't you thinking it now? Shen Qingqiu asked coldly. He'd already been killed. Does sect leader not think it's too late to rebuke this humble Shen at this point? Or do you wish to cleanse the sect? I have no right to rebuke you, said Yue Qingyuan. Both his eyes and expression were exceedingly serene, 
so much so that Chen Jingqiu inexplicably became furious with shame. Then what are you trying to do? Has Marshall brother ever considered that? If he hadn't treated Luo Binke like that in the beginning, everything that unfolded today never would have happened. Shen Jingqiu burst into laughter. <laughs> Why does sect leader say such ludicrous things? What's happened has happened. I've already considered it hundreds and thousands of times. There is no if, no in the beginning. There was never any chance of redemption. Yue Qingyuan slowly raised his face. Shen Qingqiu knew that saying those words was as good as taking a knife and stabbing it into Yue Qingyuan's chest. At first, he was gleeful, but then he looked at Yue Qingyuan, woodenly kneeling as he stared blankly at Shen Qingqiu. All of Yue Qingyuan's composure, poise and demeanour had disappeared, as if he'd aged many years in an instant. And when Chen Qingqiu saw this, a strange sensation suddenly welled inside his heart. It was probably pity. The stale white mountains that never changed, the eternally calm and collect sect leader Yue of Changchong Mountain, was at this moment so wretched, so browbeaten, that Chen Qingqiu couldn't help but feel pity. And with this pity, something inside Shen Qingqiu's chest, a knot that had resided within him for many years, finally came undone. With that, he came to the cheerful conclusion that Yue Qingyuan had truly done everything he could. He'd gone above and beyond to fulfill the cause of both kindness and duty, regardless of how much guilt weighted down his heart, his debt had long since been repaid in full. You should go, said Chen Qingqiu. I'll tell you this, even if all of this could be redone from the beginning, in the end, the conclusion would remain the same. My heart is full of malice, my insights hatred and resentment. Today, Luo Binghe wishes for me to die horribly, and I only have myself to blame. Do you still hold such hatred within yourself? asked Yue Qingyuan. Shen Qingzhou laughed uproariously. <laughs> only when I see other people unhappy can I be happy myself. What do you think? Holding Xuan Su across both hands, Yuan Qingyuan offered it to Shen Qingqiu. If you still hold such hatred, draw Xuan Su's sword and take my life. Shen Qingqiu scoffed. You asked me to kill you here, sect leader Yue. Are you unsatisfied with the crimes Lord Bing has already charged me with? You think them too few? Besides, who do you think you are? My hatred will be resolved as long as I kill you. I'm far beyond cure. I hate everything. Don't blame this humble shun for any disrespect or mockery. But if sect leader reconsiders himself that very cure, he thinks too highly of himself. He was devastatingly straightforward with his humiliation of Ye Qingyuan. But the latter didn't withdraw his hands. It was like he hadn't understood. Instead, he seemed to summon his courage. Xiao Zhou, I... Don't call me that! Shen Qingqiu snarled. Slowly, Ye Qingyuan's hands slumped. The sword lowering with them. A long moment passed, and then he went to hold Shen Qingqiu's hand again. He sent him an unceasing flow of spiritual energy, helping to alleviate those injuries. It was like his courage had been shattered, for all through the following moments, Yue Qingyuan never again opened his mouth to speak. 
Finally, Shen Qingzhou said, I thank sect leader for his generosity. Now, get lost. Never appear before me ever again. Yue Qingyuan put Xuan Su's sword back on his waist, then complied with Shen Qingzhou's wish and slowly walked out. Shen Qingzhou had one final thought as he walked out. If you can't escape this, sect leader Yue, get far away, as far as you can from now on. Never again involve yourself with a thing like Shen Qingqiu. With his remaining eye, Shen Qingqiu stared at the cellar entrance. After staring at it for an unknown number of days, Luo Binghe finally returned. Even when inside a damp and gloomy underground prison, Luo Binghe was as graceful and elegant as ever, and soiled and pristine. As he stepped over the hardened blackened bloodstains on the ground, he spoke charmly. Sect leader Yue kept the appointment as expected. I am truly grateful for that tactful yet sorrowful letter of blood Shi Zun wrote. Otherwise, this disciple could never have succeeded so easily. <laughs> Originally, this disciple wanted to bring sect leader Yue's body back to show Shi Zun. But the arrows had been drenched in a rare poison. When he got close and touched them, even slightly, Sect leader Yue just, uh, alas, I could only retrieve his sword. Let's call it a memento for Shi Zun. Luo Binghe was lying. Luo Binghe was a shameless, treacherous little liar who spoke only falsehoods. His flagrant lies were uncountable, so this time too. He had to be conniving away with some plot or scheme with which to deceive others. Luo Binghe sat down on a chair off to the side. Whenever he watched Shen Qingzhou scream and wail, he always used the seat. He scraped at the leaves drifting within his steaming cup of tea and commented, Heroes and famed swords come in pairs. Xuan Su's sword is indeed an excellent blade, worthy of sect leader Yue. However, there's something even more wondrous about that sword. Sect leader Yue's cultivation has truly opened up my eyes. While Shi Zun is enjoying his remaining days here, if you're bored with nothing to do, you can thoroughly ponder it. It is truly very interesting. Shen Qingqiu didn't understand. In Huanghua Palace's water prison, upon their last meeting with each other, he'd done his utmost to be callous, cruel, and sarcastic. He told Yue Qingyuan to get lost, and Yue Qingyuan had done so. Shen Qingqiu had been uncertain if that letter of blood could call him here. But no normal person if they were of sound thought, would step into such a blatant and disguised trap. He still didn't understand. I thought you weren't coming. Bobinka found his results yet unsatisfactory. He smiled brightly. Ah, right. Though Shi Zun's blood was awfully heart-wrenching, it was a bit sloppy and half-hearted. After all, it had been perfunctorily written for this disciple while under great duress. This disciple understands. Therefore, in order to express your sincerity, I had two other things specifically sent with it. Shen Qingqiu understood. Those, quote, two other things were the two legs that had once been attached to his body. This was far too comical. 
Once he'd waited days and nights for that person and he hadn't come. And now when he never thought that person would, he just had to. On the corner of Shen Qingqiu's lips hung a cold smile. <laughs> Ye Qingyan. Ah, Ye Qingyan. Originally, Luo Minghe's mood could have been considered cheerful, but when he saw that bizarre smile, he inexplicably became upset. What are you smiling about? He asked gently. Shen Qingqiu ignored him, but continued to sneer. Luo Binghe shed his gleeful expression. Shen Qingqiu, he said attentively. Do you think that pretending to be insane will work on me? Luo Binghe, said Shen Qingqiu, enunciating every syllable. You're a bastard. You know that. A sudden silence descended around them. Luo Binghe stared at him, and Chen Qingqiu stared and swervingly back. Suddenly, Luo Binghe's lips twitched, his right hand gently caressing Chen Qingqiu's left shoulder, then squeezed. A terrifying scream pierced the air. Blood sprayed from the fresh stump that had been Shen Qingqiu's left arm, and he howled while roaring with laughter, his breaths broken and stilted. <laughs> For Luo Binghe, torturing Shen Qingqiu was an incredibly satisfying pastime. Shen Qingqiu's screams made him feel like he was floating in paradise. But this time, for some reason, Luo Binghe didn't feel the same joy. His chest heaved, its rise and fall growing increasingly violent. With a kick, he knocked Shen Qingqiu over, making him spin in place on the ground, smearing blood all over the floor. Previously, Luo Binghe had ripped off his two legs in the same manner as if plucking limbs from an insect. Pain tore through Shen Qingqiu, the kind that made him feel like he was in hell, yet the sensation no longer seemed real. On the contrary, he became lucid, clear and rational. Luo Binghe, everything you have today, you owe to taking me as your master, so shouldn't you thank me? Instead, you're wholly unable to tell what's good for yourself. As expected, you're an ungrateful bastard. <laughs> Luo Minghe's rage passed in an instant, and he suddenly calmed down. His smile was sinister, and he said softly, Do you want to die? How can something like death come so cheaply? Shi Zun, you've committed many evils in your life. You hurt those with whom you had grievances, and also those against whom you bore no grudges. Even when half in your grave, you managed to drag down a sect leader. If your death isn't drawn out, if you don't simultaneously endure everyone else's suffering at least once, how? Can you do right by them? With a wave of his hand, he cast Xuan Su's fragments onto the ground. When Chen Qingqiu heard the resulting clatter, it was as if his throat had been slashed with an invisible knife. His laughter instantly stopped. Amidst dishevelled hair and a face drenched in blood, a single eye shone brightly a white fire glowing in the dark night. He shakily dragged himself toward those broken sword fragments. There was nothing left, only a single blade. He had single-handedly created the Luo Binghe of today, but who had single-handedly wrought this ending of Shen Qingqiu's? Yue Qingyuan shouldn't have met this kind of fate. 
for the purpose of attending a decades late appointment in order to fulfill a futile, meritless promise. The sword broken, the man dead. It shouldn't have been like this. Threads of blood unfurled, extending outward. Right before they should have converged into one, they passed each other by.